Hi everyone, Tulu here. I am an indie game developer, and this is my first video, the beginning of a video series that will teach you how to build utility AI from scratch in Unity. The reason why I'm doing this is because there's not a whole lot of material out there to help people understand or get started with using utility AI in their games. The few solutions I have found out there, they aren't either aren't very well documented, use really confusing terms to me, or just implemented in a way that is not flexible enough for my own game that I'm building. So after about six months of tinkering, I ended up building my own utility AI, and I wanted to share that with you all how I did it so that you guys can also have a starting point of your own. As with many things, my solution isn't the only way to build a utility AI, nor am I claiming that it is the most efficient way to do it, but it is a way that works for me, and I've tried to architecture it to be as flexible as possible um, for others to use and for my own extensions. So if you do decide to follow along this tutorial, what I'm hoping for is that you will have a prototype utility AI that you can build off of for your own games, or at the very least, have a clearer understanding of utility AI in general, so that when you do go tinkering with other solutions out there, you will have some kind of background to help understand their solutions. Fair warning, uh, this is more geared towards people who have an intermediate understanding of Unity and coding, but I'm gonna do my very best to explain things in simple terms so that even if you don't understand the nitty gritty details of the code, you can still understand the system well enough to maybe play around with it. So with that, let's get started with some introductory concepts. Okay, so before we jump into Unity and the code, I think it's important to first uh, just get an overview understanding of what utility AI even is and where it fits in the spectrum of AI systems out there for video games. So that's the focus of this int first introductory video. So when we talk about video game AI, we're typically talking about AI that controls NPC behaviors. The most common solutions for that are finite state machines and behavior trees. The basic idea behind these frameworks is to give the NPC specific instructions on what to do for every situation they encounter. If the player is nearby, do this. If the player is far away, do something else. And for most games, this simple framework works perfectly fine, and there's no need for anything more complex. They're pretty simple to understand, and there's tons of tools and tutorials out there for uh, finite state machines and uh, behavior trees. But if we need more complex uh, and more dynamic behavior, then we need to kind of upgrade to the next level. You know, What if I want my NPC to just react intelligently without me having to script out what it should do under every possible situation? That's when you start getting into the territory of goal-oriented action planning, or GOP, and utility AI, where you give the NPCs the ability to think through situations they encounter instead of spoon-feeding them the answers to every situation. In GOPE, uh, what, what happens is you give the NPCs all the available actions it can perform, and then the NPC pieces together a sequence of these actions based on its awareness of the world around them. And once it has a planned out sequence of actions, it just carries them out one by one. That's one way to do it. Um, in Utility AI, the NPC actually goes through and picks out the best action to perform at any moment based on their current situation. So. This is really cool because now with these with these uh, more complex AI systems, the NPCs can be thrown into any situation and they'll react to it without you spoon feeding them uh, the answers. But it's also harder to code and understand than finite state machines and behavior trees. Uh, utility AI also tends to be a uh, you know a tad bit more math heavy too, so there's that to scare away people. But it can be avoided as I'll show you in the later videos. Now. Uh, once we go beyond GOP and Utility AI, then we kind of reach the nether realm of machine learning, uh, more specifically reinforcement learning, where you can actually teach the AI to play games like a real player. Uh, this AI is still not yet very accessible to most people because it's more complicated and still largely in development by people who are way smarter than me. Uh, but that really is the future of game AI, which is not quite there yet. Uh, there's drawbacks to all these different systems, so you'll just have to decide what level of intelligence you need for your NPCs and what level of complexity you're willing to accept in building them and maintaining them. But in this video series, we are going to specifically focus on utility AI because that's what I'm using for my own game and it's just really interesting to me. Okay, 
So let's go hit the blackboard and sketch out uh, this utility AI. So we know that um, we have an NPC, right? So we're starting out with an NPC here. Here's my beautiful little stick figure NPC. And our NPC has a brain to think, right? Just like in any character or any person would have. You have a brain to think to make all your decisions. So we're literally going to model it after what it's like to be a regular human being. Uh, my NPC is going to have a component called brain, AI brain, right? Now let's take a look at what's happening inside this AI brain. Um, AI brain. As I mentioned in my introductory video, utility AI is basically you provide the NPC a set of possible actions it can take, and then it uh, decides on which of those actions is the best one to perform at any given time. So here, to di di to actually illustrate it and diagram, then we're basically providing an action list, an, an action list, one, two, three, four, and let's, uh, let's say one of the actions is eat, one of the other actions is sleep, another possible action is to work, and we're providing this list of actions to the AI brain. And the AI brain is going to process this list of actions and somehow spit back to us what is the best action. It's going to give us that. So let's dig a little bit deeper into what's going on here. Let's take one of those actions and look at them. All right. So we have an action here called sleep. Oh, sorry, called eat. And in order to decide what if an action uh, what can happen, you have to take into consideration what goes into that action, right? What what decides if I'm going to eat? So we're gonna so every action then has a set of considerations. Considerations. This is a key vocabulary. Um, and it has multiple considerations, right? For example, the first one could be hungry, right? Hunger. How hungry is my NPC? That's a consideration to take to determine if he should eat. Another consideration, we'll just call it C2. Here is consideration one. Another consideration might be the time of the day. Time of day, right? Another consideration that goes into deciding if he, can, he should eat or can eat is does he have food in his inventory? So do I have food? And these would be the considerations that go into deciding how important this action is. And how can we quantify how important it is? Well, we're going to have to somehow combine these considerations to give us a numerical score. And so you can see that we can do this for all the other actions also. We have to do this for all the other actions, for action of sleep. Right? Sleep is also going to have its own set of considerations, C1, C2, C3, and you're going to somehow combine them to give your, your sleep action a score. And you just basically continue this process. So in the AI brain, I give it a set of actions, and then um, it has to return me a set of scores, basically, right? And once I have all these scores, then I can take a look at them and say, what's, what's my best score? What's my best scoring action? The AI brain simply just basically picks out the best score and spits out your best action. And once it picks out the best action and spits it out, then it can pass it on to whatever else is attached to the NPC game object, right? So this whole process here, if we zoom out and look at the process, all of this has to happen inside our AI brain. And once that happens, then we can take this best action and give it to all the other components that might need it to make that best action happen. Here's our NPC. 
and he might have other controllers attached to him. For example, he might have a mover controller that controls his movements. He might have an animations controller that picks out what animations are going to play. Animation controller and other controllers, right? And they all listen for what action does the AI brain put out? It puts out the best action. And everyone else just takes that best action and makes it happen. And that's the basic idea behind um, the architecture we're going to design, create for our utility AI system right here. You have an AI brain, it picks out the best action based on the list of actions that you give it, and then everyone else just kind of works with whatever best action got picked to make it happen. And some of the important terms that we're going to need are uh, we're already mentioned here. So we're going to have to, so actions. Actions are the things that the MPC can do, right? Considerations. That's another important term that you'll see in utility AI. Considerations are basically just information about the world, um, information about the MPC, information about other NPCs that the MPC needs to gather in order to decide uh, if um, how urgent that action is. So depending on which uh, you know solution you find out there for utility AI, you know you might find like a utility AI tool on the asset store um, and it, they might end up using some really weird terminology uh, for actions and considerations but just remember that at the core of utility AI you're going to always have actions and you're always going to have considerations that decide how urgent those actions are. And you're also going to have scores, right? Scores are attached to actions. Every action has a score that tells you how important that action is. And then the AI basically just picks out the, the, the highest score or the lowest score, depending on what your criteria is. And that basically decides what is the best action. So these are just some important vocabulary that you, know, you should be aware of uh, so that you don't get too confused as we move on and you don't and know you're also you'll also be able to understand um, how other people create uh, utility AI tools okay so that wraps up the conceptual overview of utility AI and in the next video we will jump right into unity to start coding things out I'm planning to release these videos in bite-sized pieces so people don't get too overwhelmed with the code because it can get a bit complicated um, there's a reason why utility AI isn't as popular as the other AI systems out there, and it's that very complexity that I'm talking about. But hopefully I can give you guys some insight uh, with this series and learn from the experience myself. So thank you very much for your time, and I hope to see you guys in the next video.